Hi, I'm Mark Lawson, and I am president of EC Shermer and the ECS Publishing Group. And today we're very pleased to have a chance to talk with conductor Mark Shapiro about a new series that we are starting called the Mark Shapiro Series. Um, Mark wears many hats in the New York area and is well known as the conductor uh, of many different groups, and particularly the Cantorai in New York. So I'm going to let him talk a little bit about all of his roles. But uh, welcome, Mark. We're so glad that you can visit with us. Thank you, Mark. I'm so excited to be part of this project. So as you mentioned, I, I've been our um, artistic director of Cantori New York, which is a chamber chorus in New York, um, for three decades. Next season will be my 30th, 30th with them. Uh, I've also been with the Cecilia Chorus of New York. Next season will be my 10th season with them. With them. And then uh, before that, I conducted the Monmouth Civic Chorus in New Jersey for about 22 years, I think. Uh, I'm also a um, music director of the Prince Edward Island Symphony in Canada, and I do a fair bit of uh, freelance opera as well. So I, I like to keep a finger in a bunch of pots, um, and I'll just boast of very proud to have won five uh, ASCAP programming awards uh, yes. with three of these organizations. So that's, that's great. sort of been my interest for a long time is finding ways to new spaces, new new possibilities. Well, I think that the creative programming part is what led to this series in many ways. Uh, I know when we started talking about this, that you had a very specific set of criteria that you kind of had for envisioning what would go in this series. Could you expand on that a little bit about what you've been looking for? Yeah, absolutely. So I think because of my work, um, not only in choral music or oratorio, but also in orchestral conducting and opera, I've always had an interest in longer time spans, works that tell a story, that uh, fill some time. And uh, with a strong narrative energy where you really feel engaged as you're listening. So um, at the same time, a lot of my work is with Cantor New York, which is a chamber chorus. And we, we're not looking for expensive, elaborate works to produce. So I'm particularly interested in this idea of chamber oratorio, chamber cantata where you can use this time very effectively, but with a small number of instruments and a small number of soloists or no soloists. So we were looking for this kind of chamber uh, oratorio cantata. Of course, if you're using that amount of time, um, you need to go beyond some of um, what happens in contemporary composition can be kind of vertical and static, mm -hmm. but when you're using a longer time span, you, you do need to have that sort of, um, harmonic and contrapuntal energy and momentum. So I re was really looking for pieces that have um, harmonic uh, propulsiveness and then a horizontal energy and contrapuntal sophistication. So that was the sort of package that this series is really meant to curate is chamber cantatas oratorios that are 15, 20 minutes or longer um, and that have this kind of Harmonic and and ver and uh, and contrapuntal um, power. Right. So the first piece that we've released is called "One Hour to Madness and Joy." Um, yes. You want and it's a Walt Whitman text. And you want to talk about the origin origin of this piece? Sure. So this this piece has a, a wonderful history. Um, the composer Jorge Martin and I go all the way back to college together. We were freshmen um, at Yale a long time ago. Uh, and even then, I knew that this was somebody with an extraordinary talent. And we've stayed friends ever since. Um, he wrote this piece kind of uh, on his own initiative for Cantori New York quite a few years ago as a six-part a cappella piece. And we did perform it, Cantori, and I remember it as one of the most exhausting pieces I have ever done just physically exhausting. Um, and I think Jorge was full of beans at that point and the Whitman text is so passionate. So I've, it, the music is fantastic and it has stayed in my mind always to say to Jorge, you know, I think this piece really could have a life, but I think the way it was as an a cappella thing, it's just too strenuous for it to really do. Um, so a couple of years ago, we got to talking and decided that he would rewrite it for the Cecilia Chorus of New York, and he added um, organ accompaniment, 
spaced it out so that there are times when the organ is playing and the chorus is not continuously singing. Um, and some of the, the very intricate material he's given to the organ so the chorus can do a more focused delivery of the text. And then he added a different percussion instrument for every movement. So this takes his wonderful music, but takes a little bit of the, the physical enormity of it off of the singing in a way that I think it needed and really benefits from. And now I think it's, it's a really seaworthy cantata. That's good. And you can find uh, samples of this on our website, and I'll just tell people how to, how to find it. Um, uh, what you do is go to the choral section, and then you would uh, pick the concert section. And then on the left-hand side, you can filter by uh, series. And you can find the Mark Shapiro series, and all the things that we'll be adding uh, will go into that particular um, uh, search function. But right now it's on the new releases and you can see all the pages and preview it uh, at this point. So we have some other pieces scheduled for release and when we ever, whenever we get back to singing again, we will eventually release those. Uh, can you talk about those for a moment, some things that you know are coming up? The next piece that's coming up, there, there are two that I think we've committed to so far with other things we're beginning to talk about. Uh, the next one is by Philip Lasser who um, is, uh, teaches counterpoint at Juilliard. And he runs a program in Paris called the European American Musical Dance, where I've been on the faculty for uh, over two decades as well. That's really in the mold of Nadie Boulanger and this very uh, rigorous teaching of uh, counterpoint and analysis harmony. And she very much believed that any composer needs to sing in a chorus that she, she felt that was a really fundamental part of musical training. And Philip has really absorbed that into the teaching there and his own work. So this piece, we this was Cantori, New York. We commissioned for the centenary of the armistice of World War I. Uh, the title is The Elements. It's for two cellos and chorus. Um, and there are uh, four movements with poetry by Hayden Cummings and Frost. Um, very, very poignant um, in partly tragic, but then with an extremely moving and uh, I wouldn't say exactly upbeat, but very warm and touching ending mm -hmm. that had people in tears when we, when we premiered it. Um, we also premiered it, we performed it that same season in a memorial service in New York for the armistice itself. It was an incredible experience. So as a, as a memorial to World War I, which I think is very important to us right now, uh, we're living through uh, you know this this centenary of the the pandemic with another pandemic. Um, th there's a lot that I think when we think about history and all that it means to us, this piece will be really strong. Um, and then the next one is a pivot to a completely other direction. Uh, Lembit Beecher is a composer um, also based in New York, who um, I, he was brought to my attention by another conductor. Uh, and we got to talking about projects. He's written quite a bit of opera and is very interested in that. And he's, his father uh, was a translator and, or is a translator and biographer of the French utopian philosopher Charles Fourier, who is kind of a crazy man. And the uh, texts are wildly utopian about free love and about all kinds of things like that. And the piece is really rhapsodic. Um, it's for the combination of two horns and harp, like the, the famous Brahms piece. And um, Lembit's music is just full of light and joy. And if you know him, he's, he's, uh, he's that way himself. There's a lot of joy and, and lightness in his spirit. Uh, so that's also coming. I should say it's in English. The translations are by uh, Lembit's dad. And the texts are really wild about people wearing tails and all kinds of things like that. Really fun. That's great. That's great. So we will make those available uh, fairly soon, actually, so that when we get back to singing, if people uh, want to look at those, they'll be able to. So this is this is great. We're looking forward to working with you on this series, and I want to thank you for taking time to visit with me about them. Thank you so much, Mark. I'm, I'm really excited to be working together. It's a, a dream come true. Great. Well, thank you, and have a wonderful day. And you too.